bringing the people behind our food to life. I cut off the tip and the little tiny bit of the end. I'm going to use the squash core. I'll do the big one first. The stuffing we used for another dish, so it's none of it is wasted. I used to love these when I was little, these beautiful little cores. The idea is to get this whole thing cored at about an eighth of, eighth of an inch thick without breaking it or piercing the edge. So when I was little, my grandmother and mother didn't want me to do it because I would inevitably do it the wrong way. But eventually I learned it takes practice. You're just coring out the center and scraping. It's kind of got a sharp blade. Now tell me about this device that you have. This is something my mom had made when she came to America because she wanted to make Lebanese squash and there weren't grocery stores like there are today where you can buy one of these. So she had somebody, a metal worker, take a, a brass tube and cut it and sh shape it so she could use it to core her squash. So one trick in order to gauge how far not to go through the end that I do is I kind of measure on the outside so I know I can go no further in than that before I'm going to pierce it. But I've still got a ways to go. And what do you call this device? A squash corer. So when I get to the end, one way I check is I hold this up to the light. And amazingly enough, it's transparent where it's the right thickness. If it's a little opaque, if you can't see the light through it, it's still too thick. You can use um, green zucchini for this Italian zucchini, and you can also use yellow crookneck squash. We cut off the crookneck and use um, the, the round, the bulbous part. Okay, I'm going to do my hold it up to light inspection. Looks pretty good. You want to see? Now we're going to drop this. This is a bowl of salted water with one clove of garlic in it to give it some flavor. And that's where I have the rest of the squash waiting. And then there's green onion, fresh parsley, and fresh mint. And uh, some salt, pepper, cayenne pepper. And this is the vegetarian version. There is a meat version but I like the vegetarian version. I'm gonna get my pot. Always have, we have to have our hands clean because we are using our hands for everything. So this also had some olive oil in it and at the very end I'm gonna pour on lemon juice and the tomatoes. So, I have a pot where they can stand up. They'll probably tilt a little bit. So now you just use your hand and you start stuffing. This is slow food, part of the slow food culture. So when I'm doing this, I'm not getting impatient. And also it helps to have somebody else doing it because it goes faster if there's two people. So I'm not going to pack it down real tight because the rice has to have room to expand. And I'm going to fill it to about half an inch from the very top. Kind of clean it up a little bit and that will be the first one in the pot. I'll readjust it as I add to it. Okay, I'm going to rinse off. Now I need to arrange these as vertical as possible. But I'm going to put a lid on here. So I have the whole tomatoes. I'm going to just 
pour it over the top. This is going to make the sauce. I want some to get inside. I used half of the oil in the dressing. The other half goes on top. And I have a third of a cup of lemon juice, which I squeezed from fresh lemons. We don't use that other, any lemon, fake lemon things. I want to be sure that goes inside. I add one cup of water. Bring it to the stove top. I think I'll do it on the back burner here. So it goes on high until it comes to a boil and then I'll turn it down and simmer it for about 45 minutes. A little Lebanese feast. So wow. I have some figs and cucumbers, Middle Eastern cucumbers.